Hi there, welcome again. Um, the True Our Business Focus um, series, where I chat with artists, managing directors, founders, and business leaders of scaling companies. It centers around their entrepreneurial journeys so far and their aspirations for their companies. Today, I'm really, really looking forward to speaking with Logan Nathan, who's founder and CEO of Field Service Management Reimagined. Um, welcome, Logan. Thank you, Jonathan, and great to be involved. Appreciate your invitation. Looking forward to this podcast. Fabulous. And I'm going to thank you for getting up so early. Um, Logan's uh, actually in Sri Lanka at the moment, so it's about 6 a.m. in the morning there, so I appreciate it. No worries. Welcome. Okay. So listen, well, let's just start. What does Field Service Management Reimagine do? And how long have you, has it been operating? All right. So this is our seventh year, and it's all about uh, throughout my career uh, in IT for 40 years now. 20 years of it in corporate life, in multinational corporation uh, globally. And in the last 20 years is um, really taking a journey uh, in digital transformation, uh, managing SMEs. So this learning curve over the decade or so before I got started, got me to think, you know, how do I disrupt a, uh, an area of business, which I'm familiar with and uh, happened to be field services area that I picked purely because of the customer backgrounds uh, that we had previous to uh, me starting on you know, about seven years ago now. And so what does field service management reimagine do? Okay. So if you really look at field services, they actually provide a service uh, to their clients, either be in the consumer side of it or to a business. Uh, doing so, they all have uh, either some sort of manual uh, system or a uh, digitized digital, digital system like, you know, accounting system or or, or a, some sort of uh, a business process system. However, what we found is a gap between how they communicate with the client, uh, whether it's business client or a consumer client, in client, uh, and, and themselves managing it. The other thing that come out uh, and after writing my book about digital digital transformation for SMEs, that uh, Uber like and and yeah, Netflix and uh, Airbnb and all of these disruptive technology has changed the way the consumers or business customers expect the service to be done. With that, we saw a huge gap in the field service area where they all have some sort of system but they do, not, they do not communicate the way Uber does or Airbnb does with the client. So what we have done is really bring brought that experience specifically to the field service area, which I'm happy to expand if you want me to do so. Well, can you give me an example? If you have one example is, example is uh, you as a consumer, if you actually go and hire a trade, or tradies, we call them in Australia, um, you often you know uh, start praying Hopefully that trade will come and do the right thing by yourself and, and then give you uh, an invoice, right? But what they do, how they do it, and all of this not transparent to the consumer. And, and especially it actually gets worse when you come to business because they are acting on behalf of their client. They give that piece of work, they go and do it, and there's no transparency between the business. They, they're given the business, typically a real estate or starter or uh, anybody in, in the middle managing trades uh, and giving that piece of work and all you get a, an invoice at the end of the day. And then the business go through a lot of justification with their client. Why would that you know, that charge come about? And there's all sorts of transaction argument go through. Typically, to do a simple maintenance work and in a real estate perspective, it can have anything between 10 to 15 email transaction <laughs> right, to get things done. There's a lot of inefficiency there. So what we have brought is to really seamlessly manage all of that. Fabulous. And so tell me, who would you describe as your, your best customer, your core customer? Well, the best customer is uh, someone managing very large trade base, um, you know, typically at the well-established uh, SMEs, over a million to 100 million uh, in terms of revenue in their books. So uh, typically large strata companies, real estate are the one that we have been targeting 
although this can be applicable to anybody that does the maintenance or installation um, of, of uh, any services that that really like uh, to manage their service level with their customer well uh, to to manage this uh, subcontractor services. Okay, thank you. So we're going through the pandemic. Um, what are some of the actions you took during the pandemic that have, that have remained with the business going forward? Well, if I have to say it in one word, it's all about cash. Mm. Yep. Cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. That's a magic word. There's a number of things. Uh, you know, when pandemic hit us in March 2020, we all know about it now, and we lost 80% of the revenue overnight. Yep. There was only one thing that I told all my staff and says, it, is, it doesn't really matter. We don't know exactly what's going to happen to us. Right? It doesn't matter what happens in the next few months. People will look back and say how we are actually operating after the pandemic. Right? And it's not the journey we take it, it's how we actually come out of the other side. Immediately come to my mind is how do you manage the cash flow? Right? During this tough time, whether that's going to be three months, six months, we had no idea. That's number one. Number two is how do you retain all your skills that you actually had? and spend a lot of investment towards them, how do you keep them, right? How do you keep their livelihood intact? Fortunately, we were able to do both uh, in communicating with our investors and, and you know they were very supportive. We were able to look at all the suppliers that we had a long-term relationship, how to manage that cash flow part of it to a short term, because nobody knew exactly how long this is gonna take. The other part is the main cash flow for us is the key skill staff who were able to really, um, you know, take a pay cut during that period and, and really got over it. Thankfully, within six months, not only we reached back to the way we were, we actually quadrupled our revenue over the next 12 months. So that's a, been a remarkable journey by putting the head down and really focus on the end game, not the not the, the, the reactive part that happened. You know, I have a very simple uh, rules when you come to uh, anything happening. If something bad happening to you, always ask what is good about it. The opposite to what normally people do. And if something really going good, what is bad about this? Because that really gives you the mitigation that really you need to prepare as a leader. And uh, I often say this to people. So... You know, it's it's an interesting point you make. It's um, uh, you know, um, yeah, showing gratitude is probably another way of putting your first your first point. Um, and it was really fascinating. I I had a, a acute appendicitis in January. It was really not be about for about six weeks. I spent forty days in hospital. Hey, uh, you know, you start by going, "Well, I've got all the plans for the year and lower," but. Yeah, very quickly I turned around and, and sort of just said how grateful I was to my my own team and my family and my kids and my wife and yeah, the medical staff, you know, so it all just kept humming. But yeah, no, I take the absolutely take the point. So Joy, what do you think the future looks like for you and what are the main challenges you've got in the business going forward? Yeah. Uh we have always been driven and always you know, dream big and and drive. And that's been my journey for the last uh, 40 years uh, since I've migrated to Australia. And this uh, journey, the last six years with this field service management, we saw an opportunity not just in Australia, like most of the success stories that start up in Australia, but it's a global opportunity. Uh, the piece of uh, innovation that we did with this uh, I4D, we call it, uh, Information for Transformation, uh, it's actually a, a requirement globally. So we have taken the journey and while post pandemic, of course, while we were really busy, uh, really developing and enhancing the, the platform, uh, we went around globally to the US, UK, Europe, and found a lot of clients are keen on it. So today we have now established in Europe, UK, and also US. Although we haven't really done a big uh, client base yet, but that's basically imminent in terms of taking that journey ahead. That was really making this uh, uh, platform a global, global platform. 
Fabulous. What's the journey ahead for the next two years? Um, linking into that, what do you think has been um, your biggest learning since you've been a business, business owner? Well, like I said, uh, running a small business, right? I come from a, a corporate environment. So you come with your thick head, you think you know it all because you, you know, had everybody. When you start a small business, I'm saying this for listeners who are really jump from a corporate environment into a small business. And what happens is suddenly you are everything. You are the janitor to uh, to paying the bills to the supplier and anything yeah. in between. You have no help. And you got to really earn that help over a period of time. Often it's not the luxury of uh, what you have in a corporate life. So anybody that survived the first two years in business, I think they can march on and look forward to bigger and bigger, better things. So the, the biggest learning curve, like I said, and this is what we were prepared for the pandemic in an in a indirect way, is about cash flow maximum. Right? If I can give a piece of information to anyone about running a business, ensure your cash flow is intact at least three months ahead as a minimum. And you will, will really understand the forecast and know it like back of the event. Simple as that. Yep, absolutely agree. And uh, having come out of large businesses as well, um, and then into running my own businesses, it's, um, uh, yeah, you, you do everything, and it's hard. And it's lonely. That's the other thing. Well, so that's exactly yourself yeah. with, with the right network, the right um, mentors, the right peers is really important. People who you can actually relate to and they can relate to you. So with that, if I can really say it's all about building trust because often you need help from outside. So I have that word into acronym, that word trust into acronym. You need to be transparent. You need to build relationship. You need to be unique in what you do. You got to strategize your journey. And the final thing, the T is the most important one, is all about the timing. Often if you're trying to close a business, it's not at your timing. It's a time for your clients got to be right. And you got to understand that. If you push them too far, you lose them. If you don't push them hard enough, you also lose them. So, But that timing is all about understanding their need, their requirement, and managing with their time. So that's a trust. Transparency, relationship, uniqueness, strategize, and time. I like that. Trust. I like that. Thank you. So we, um, when you think of the word successful, who pops to mind? And can you, can you tell me why? Well, like I said, I'm never interested in politics, but funny enough, I, I admire the two uh, people that really one of them indirectly got involved, the other one, I suppose, by chance got involved. I'm talking about Nelson Mandela. Uh, it's, it's my uh, aspiration in terms of you know the lifestyle versus what he achieved. And the other one is Barack Obama, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. remarkable man that, you know, has that, uh, not the, the political part of it, political is always, uh, you know, things that uh, I'm, I don't know, uh, admire of that, but it's the way the lifestyle manages. So any successful business people, entrepreneurs, sadly what happens to them is they forego their life. What they really started with is their family, their uh, kids, uh, and their, you know, all the friends and all these things they had over a period of time, that suffers as a result of focus, unless you balance it. Now, I see with these two remarkable people, you know, for different reasons, uh, it's, it's that lifestyle balance, which I now make sure I tell my staff, it's all about learning, it's all about having a professional life and, you know, uh, enhancing your skill set, but all this remember what you're doing this for. That is what you want to follow. That's for your family and friends. That, that you have a life outside work. <laughs> so don't live for work, work for living. Yeah, and I think that's a really interesting point um, you made, Logan. Um, you coach my clients. Um, you know, I don't believe there's such a thing as work-life balance for an entrepreneur. You know, you, know, you throw that out the window at the moment you decide your own company. Um, but people talk about work-life balance and, you know, family and um, versus work. Um, the one thing entrepreneurs neglect, um, I find, is themselves. So I think there's three elements there. You know, obviously you need to, to focus on the success of the business. 
you need to focus on your family. You know, I've got an eight and a nine year old and a beautiful wife, you know, critically important. Um, but you need to focus on me as well. You can't about, you know, just a bit of time for me to make sure that I've got the headspace to focus on everybody else. But I think that's one thing we talk about here. A, um, um, a colleague, Kevin Lawrence, out of, out of the US, wrote a very good book on this called um, Your Parachute, Put On Your Parachute First. In other words, look after yourself first because you can't look after anybody else if you, if you haven't sorted that out. That's um, exactly the health part that comes into it. You know, you're well, to, it's you also you know, the mindset, it's you know, having a clear, a clear mind. Um, you know, all, all, of the, all of that, really, I think. I am today, you mates, and um, all, yeah, all of the above. So tell me, now, are there any books, podcasts, autobiographies you'd recommend? Yep. Um, I'm, I got into this entrepreneurship, uh, like I said, now just over 20 years, thanks to Anthony Robbins. I don't know whether you know about Anthony Robbins. I've actually read yeah. through his book, uh, okay. The Power, you know, the work on the giant within, started with the tape book and then attended all his academy uh, throughout the world. I was, uh, you know, lucky enough to be able to do that. With that, no, never looking back. That really set my, you know, defy your, you know, defy your odds. That's what he keeps on shouting and screaming, doing <laughs> the large, you uh, know, uh, the the webinars. So not webinars, uh, the live shows that he runs. Yeah. Um, so defy the odds. Didn't make any sense during that time, but. Sure, do now, especially post pandemic. Yeah. But it really done and defy the odds as far as surviving through that business. Uh, so that's Anthony Robbins is one of them that I highly recommend. And there are other coaches. Uh, you know, please do your own research, but that's just me. Uh, the other one is Stephen Covey, you know, uh, who left a legacy, seven habits, the highly effective people. Doesn't matter where the times have changed, the way do business have changed, the way we communicators communicating has changed. You know, right there you are, rather than having this face-to-face, -face, we're having a Zoom call. I'm in Colombo, you are in, you're in Australia. That's right. And uh, so, but the habits, the seven habits of Stephen Covey's book is highly recommended for anyone who want to have a pretty lifestyle balance that we just talked about. You know, it's interesting you say that. I probably, I think I probably um, discovered Stephen Covey and, and he, uh, he passed away 15 years ago, I suppose, man. Well, um, I read the book, you know, 30 years ago. Um, but on my daily walk with the dogs around the block, I'm currently listening to the audio book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's by Stephen Covey again. Because there are just so many lists. And, um, you know, with my, I'm going into a, a two day coaching um, session with a, one of my client leadership teams um, tomorrow. And um, uh, I've just been pretty off, you know, the materials for it. And it's all about, you know, I've actually got this big poster about um, you know, the rocks and the sand and the pebbles. So I'm going to actually put up on the wall just to remind them to focus, you know, where to, where to be focused on. Uh, some fabulous systems out of that. I agree. So listen, any last um, piece of advice or parting words from an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur? Well, the, the life of the entrepreneur is the hardest job in the world, I think. <laughs> right? So as a parting word, believe in yourself and, and focus but not as a straight line. Have the mind the, that Keelan Stephen Covey talks about, have the end in mind, not the journey. The journey you have to enjoy, uh, bring other people into it. You are not just taking the journey just for yourself, you're taking for your family and anybody that comes with and trust you to take the journey with you. And, and be flexible, look after your clients and the rest will happen, right? Mm -hmm. it, not a straight line uh, when you take an entrepreneurship. It's no, the, I, I, the one start line that uh, you you draw that draw the line and you will surprise yourself. How I was I was shocked when you said that. Absolutely. I was shocked when you said that. Look here, yeah, this thing, um, yeah, this oh, this thing behind me, and you know, the entrepreneurial journey is, you know, it's, you know, it's 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 nothing like that arrow with a star behind me. But it's um, you're absolutely right. Yeah, keep the end in mind, and you'll get there. Thank you. Yeah. Like, thank you so much. I really appreciate the time. I really appreciate you getting up so early to, to do it as well. Not a problem at all. It's any time. My journey is all about now to whatever the energy left in me. It's about really upskilling the younger generation to do 
better than what we did. Yeah, yeah thank you. And I look forward to hopefully catching up when you get when you get back. Definitely, we'll do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers, Jeff.